Hi, my name is Danny, and welcome to Esoteric Moment. Today I am going to share a bit about my 2017 Midori Traveler's Notebook setup, planner, journaling, and how I'm incorporating more druidry into this like physical object that I use every day. I have made a couple videos about Midori Traveler Notebooks in the past. If you want to see uh, a bit about how I made my Midori Traveler's Notebook, you can check up here for that video. Basically, I made my own leather cover to use as a Midori Traveler's Notebook. So it's the same leather notebook. It's aged quite lovely, I think. And I have a couple slots for a pilot I think that's how you say it, fountain pen that I use all the time, and a Pilot mechanical pencil. When I open my notebook, I have a dashboard that I did myself out of some scrapbook paper, and it has my core desired feelings, which is a tool designed by Danielle Laporte to focus in on how you actually want to design and evoke your life. So whatever feelings are compelling you to take actions like get a promotion or you know, make $10,000 or buy a house, whatever that goal that's on your to-do list is, what feelings are you really chasing after? And kind of making that your focus on setting goals and changing your life. And I think it's key when designing how you want your life to appear. So I have my 2017 core desired feelings here and a couple goals that I'm really honing in on this year that I think will accomplish these emotions. On the other side is a bill tracker. So I won't show that too much, but basically I put whatever item I have in my budget, like rent or my phone bill. And then I put the total amount due and I have a column for every month. And I just check it off when I pay that bill or when I've used that part of my budget, for instance, like food or something like that. The following notebook is a week in two pages. A planner from the actual Midori Traveler's Notebook Company. There are Monday through Sunday on this page and then this page is left open. Basically I put my water tracking on the first part of the day. Any events for work are in a little like flag stamp and special events like yoga class or something like that, a meeting, that will get put in like a circle dot. I also choose three most important tasks every day and I do that at the beginning of the day and write that in on the side. So those are the things that I'm really kind of trying to focus on. They are what I need to do, not just what I want to do. And then I don't overwhelm myself with a to-do list that is like 20 different things long. On the blank side of the week, I create every week a tracker chart. So I put the weather down when I stamp my planner on Sunday night, and then throughout the week I fill in what I have for breakfast, lunch, dinner, whether I do any exercise that day, and if I'm keeping up with meditation that night. I'm not super particular about my calorie counting. It's really just trying to make myself more aware of like how much snacking and how I feel when I make certain food choices. The next section is a financial section. I am really trying to focus in on saving more and paying down debt faster. So putting that kind of forefront every week has been very helpful. And I do a small checklist for items that I'm working on my blog and YouTube for that week. I would always like to be more consistent with when I'm posting and writing. It doesn't always happen, but this checklist is hopefully a way that I can put the topic down and what I need to do that week. I'm also doing a weekly OM reading. I've been doing this pretty regularly for a while now, but putting it right on my planner page I think is going to be a really interesting way to kind of work more closely and integrate more closely what the reading is actually doing in my life. Previously, I would always just put the readings in my journal page, wherever I was next up in, but it was harder to go back and like find specific readings. So this should be useful. I also track some TV shows that I'm watching regularly, uh, things like, you know, when Doctor Who comes out, all those lovely nerdy shows that I actually want to stay on top of. 
at the beginning of the month, I am tipping in an extra page. And this extra page has space for me to write out what Gorsi I'm actually covering in my courses through OVOT that month and how my mentor check-in went. I do an email to my mentor occasionally, but I'd really like to do that more regularly so we develop a rapport. On the other side, I have a section for wedding planning stuff because Brad and I are getting married in February, which is coming up real soon, and a section for books that I would like to get done this month, and a section for tracking health stuff. After that planner notebook, I have two kind of notes and meeting notebook on grid paper. So I have one for the library that I work in, and I just write down all my minutes during meetings. And then I have another one for community gardens. This, I also have a uh, see-through folder here that I've got a goose feather from my uh, spirit animal here and a sticker for Nalco, uh, a band I'm quite fond of. But this is just great for things I need to, you know, slip in occasionally or take with me to a meeting, something like that. It's the perfect size for plane and train tickets, which is fun. Then I have my blank journal. I go through a blank notebook really fast or um, I can take a whole, I can take almost a whole year to fill it. It really kind of depends on how consistent I am with writing in it, but that, I don't stress that detail. It's just when I have something to write, I share it in my journal and just kind of free form whatever's going on in my life. The final book is another blank notebook and I call it my dreams and designs notebook. And this is just where I put lists and projects and ideas, all of those things that don't really have a home in the rest of my notebook. There's the other side of my folder, which is a zipper pocket, and I put stickers in there for tracking whether I've had a soda that day or not, some stamps, uh, and stickers with little like quotes on them that sometimes I put in my journal. Then there's a page of sticky notes. They're really cute. They have feathers on them. They don't actually stick super well, but I purchased them and I'm going to use them up before finding other sticky notes. Then the back page is the rest of my dashboard and I have specific goals for my OBOT studies this year that I'm working on and then a tarot spread that I did for the whole entire year. And I just jotted by month some notes about what that spread was like so that I can reference it back when I'm planning my year, when I'm journaling, when I'm reflecting. I have something quick and easy to get to because I've done like tarot spreads or divination spreads for the year in the past, but I haven't always remembered which journal it's in. So this I'm hoping will make that a lot easier. All right, that is my quick run through on my 2017 Midori Traveler's Notebook setup. I'd love in the comments to hear if you've changed up your planner setup or style at all. Uh, I'm not a big person into like all the decorating stuff, but I love those Studio L2E stamps. So if you're a fangirl like me, I definitely want to hear about that in the comments as well. Thanks for watching and as always, may you find peace in the sacred grove.